Hello Calc Kids, this is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. And today we're gonna to talk about position, velocity, acceleration, just like we've done in the past, but now it's specifically when we use integrals and how that affects these three things. So to start off, I want you on the left side of your notes, I didn't give enough room on this, but I wanna make sure you remember what we did before if I had a position function, s of t, and then I took its derivative, s prime of t. So again, write this down on the far left side of your notes. s prime of t would equal the velocity. And then if I took the second derivative, s double prime of t, and what is s of t again? s of t is position. So position's derivative is a velocity, and then s double prime, position's second derivative, is the derivative of velocity, or in other words, it represents acceleration. So what we're gonna do today is go the other direction. So if you are going this way, if you want ex have acceleration and you want velocity, then you take the integral. And if you have velocity and you want position, then you take the integral again to work backwards. So that's what we're gonna do with this first one. So a particle moves along the x-axis with an acceleration of this, 12t minus four. The particle's velocity is 18 at t equals two, and then it gives us initial position. So what is a function x of t that represents the position? In order to get to position, when we start with acceleration, we have to work our way backwards, right? We gotta work our way through velocity and then up to position. So let's start off with that. V of t is going to equal the antiderivative of this. So let's take the integral. The antiderivative is 12t squared over 2. So 6t squared minus 4t and then plus some constant. And I'm going to say constant of a little v here, constant for the velocity. Now what did they give us? They gave us that the velocity is 18 centimeters per second at the time of 2. So we can go ahead and say that this over here, the velocity is 18, if we plug a two into the time. So two squared is four, times six is 24, minus two times four, eight, plus this constant, the constant of velocity. And let's see, what do we get here? 24 minus eight is 16. 16 subtracted over here, we're gonna get two. So when you solve this whole thing, that constant is a two. So now we can say, well, if the velocity is this whole thing here, then the position function, my x of t, is going to be the antiderivative of this. Let's go up one step, take the integral of velocity. And that leaves us with this right here. So we've got the antiderivative with a plus c at the very end. I'm gonna call this c here an a c with a little x here, just to remind me that it's of the position function constant. Now, what is this thing? It says the initial position of the particle is eight centimeters. So initial means at time zero. So this here is actually our c, our constant for the position function. How do I know that? Because if it's initial position, the time is zero, 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 zero. So then this is eight and it equals c. So that leads us to our answer. So this is the, the position function and how do we get there? We took the antiderivative or the integral of acceleration and then found out the velocity and then worked our way all the way up to position function. So that's a little bit of the idea of what we're doing today. Now, I cannot possibly give you every single possible problem that they would give you with regards to acceleration, velocity, position, all that stuff. So it's the general idea of how this works. I do want to show you a couple other examples though that you will see, and then I'm throwing out a whole bunch of different types of problems at you for this practice. But again, there's no way I could possibly give you every type just for this and this lesson. For this problem, we have Mr. Brust. He's going to drive over to Mr. Sullivan's house across town. He's going to take 30 minutes to get there. So we have a graph because he is so cool. He comes up with a graph that shows his velocity. So this is again, his velocity. So this is kind of weird because he has negative velocity, then positive velocity, then negative velocity, and then positive velocity. So what we could probably say is that if it's negative velocity, he's going the wrong way. He's not going correctly to Mr. Sullivan's house. Right, and then he figures that out, turns around here. Now he has positive velocity as he's going the right direction. And then he gets must get lost because now he's going back towards his house again, negative velocity towards his house. And now he has positive velocity again and he's going all the way until he gets to Mr. Sullivan's house there. Okay, so we're gonna say at 30 minutes, he's there at Mr. Sullivan's house. How far is Mr. Brust from his house after 10 minutes? So the way you do that is we're going to take the integral from zero minutes to 10 minutes of velocity. So of V of T. 
Now I'm gonna not type out the, or write out this whole thing here because I've got it there. So I'm just gonna refer to it by saying V of T, which on the AP exam, you're allowed to do, especially when you're taking a calculator problem. So you can just write it like this. And then let's grab our calculator and figure out what that equals. So here I typed it in, I've got sine, I'll move this over so you can see both. I've got sine of 0.3x plus natural log of x plus one minus two, yep, that's right. And so now I can go, let's go back to my main menu, say math option number nine is my integral, and I'm going from zero to 10, and then I wanna plug in whatever I did for the variables button, the y variables, and the function of y one. All right, and then hit my variable with respect to x, and there's my answer, 3.0101. Okay, so just a little over three miles. So after 10 minutes, he's we've got 3.010. We can keep going. So three point, how far has he gone? 3.01 miles. That's how far he is from his house, excuse me. So what we just figured out was the area under the curve here to here, that's negative. So I'm gonna put it in red. And then the blue is positive up until we get to 10. So this counts by, I've got my scale here. It counts by fives. So five, 10, right to there. So that part of it was positive. So I subtracted the red because he was going the wrong way. And then he finally started going the right way. And this is the positive direction. And so it's 3.01 miles when you add them all together. The plus and then the minus. So now how far is Mr. Bruss from his house after 15 minutes? So now we're gonna go out to 15. So we're gonna continue to add this stuff up and then subtract this. So I'm just gonna set it up by starting at the beginning again because I'm using a calculator, so it's kind of easy. I'm gonna go from zero to 15 of V of T DT and that's gonna equal, now watch this shortcut on the calculator. This is cool. Once you already have it plugged in, you can do this. I like this option. I'm gonna go second and then the enter button. Second enter, pull this up so you can see it. The enter button has this little entry right above it and it just pulls up the last thing you entered. And now I can scroll over here and change the 10 to a 15. Oh, that's so much faster. So again, that's second enter and it just pulls that up and then boom, 3.397 and then that's miles. So after 15 minutes, he's 3.397 miles away from his house. Okay, next part of this. If Mr. Brust arrives at Mr. Sullivan's house after 30 minutes, how far away does he live? So how far away is he from Bruss house? That is going from zero to 30 V of T. Those 30 minutes, we integrate the velocity and it's gonna tell us how far he is from the starting position. So again, grab the calculator. I'm gonna do second enter to pull up my, the last thing I did and just change the 15 to a 30. Makes that really quick and easy. 22.824. So just over 22, just a little under 23 miles is how far apart they live. Mr. Bruss got lost, right? All this negative red stuff represents that he was lost as he was driving all the way there. And then the blue, he was going in the right direction. So he drove a lot further than he had to drive if he could have just gone straight there. So the question is how far did he actually drive? So what we could do in this case is you could separate this you could figure out where is this x-intercept, where is this x-intercept, where is this x-intercept, and break it up into one, two, three, four different integrals. Okay, that would be a pain, but you could do it. So I would do the integral of this red one and then make the answer positive. The integral of the blue one is already gonna be positive. The integral of this red one and then make it positive. And then the integral of that blue one and then add all the answers up. But what's nice is there's a much faster way of doing that. So what we do is we take from zero to 30, instead of just the velocity, we take the absolute value of the velocity. And when we integrate that, we will get the entire distance that he traveled. So on the calculator, we gotta make sure you know where that absolute value is. So I'm gonna go math nine to pull up my little integral here. And I'm gonna go zero to 30. And now here inside, I need to create absolute value brackets. So there's a couple ways of doing it. The one way that, kids do it as math button, and then over here to the number menu, and it's the first option. So math, move over to number, but I always forget that. So here's the nice thing about this, see down here where it says the zero button, right above zero it says catalog. So I just go to second and then catalog, because catalog gives you a list of everything the calculator does, and then absolute value is the first one, because it's alphabetical. So if you're not using a TI-84, you're gonna have to figure out how to enter in your absolute values along with the integral symbol. This is very important. You will have this on an AP exam where you've gotta be able to pl appropriately plug in an absolute value and where it goes. So we're gonna take the absolute value of the, uh, the velocity function, which I plugged into Y1. 
So there we go. And then it's with respect to X. And then it should be larger than my answer without the absolute value, because it's now going to take those negatives and make them positives. Thinking, thinking. Okay, 28.497. So that is how far Mr. Bruss drove around. So you can see here, you could subtract the two of them, and you can see how much extra he drove around because he was lost and going the wrong direction. So that leads us to an important conclusion, and that is these rules here. If you take the integral of velocity, it is displacement. It's the starting point, and we've kind of talked a little bit about this before, but it's you have a starting point and then an end point. If you start at point A and you end at point B, okay, that is displacement. And it, they don't care how far you travel. Like maybe you, you might have gone the long way to get to A. You went, maybe went down here and then up there and then over here and then back again, and then you stop right there, right? Displacement is just how far is this point to this point in a straight line. That's all it is. But velocity, if you take the, excuse me, the absolute value of velocity, if you integrate that, that gives you the total distance that you've traveled, not just the displacement. So uh, like what we did before, but I'm gonna have you on the far left side of your notes, please write this down because this is important. If I write the integral of velocity and I were to take the absolute value of that whole thing, that is not total distance. Okay, put a big X through that. If you take the absolute value of the integral of velocity, that's just finding displacement and then making it positive, right? That's all it is. So be careful. That is not finding the total distance. Total distance is when you take the integral of the absolute value of velocity. That's got to be inside the integral. Okay, and then the other thing is, we've talked about this a little bit before. Just remember that this is not the same thing as speed, though. When you have the integral there, it's total distance. If you just take the absolute value of velocity, that's what speed is. Velocity has sign to it. Speed does not have sign to it. Okay, so just don't get those confused. So these three things are all different things. This is not what you want to work with. You want to work with this one. Next up, we're going to figure out the position of a particle after three seconds if we knew that x of zero equals five. Okay, so we've got velocity here. That's nice. We have the velocity function. And this goes back to unit six when we started learning about accumulation functions where we'd have a rate of change and it would accumulate. Okay, that's what this is very, that's actually just the same thing. So it's not a new thing, but you just have to recognize when we're talking about position velocity that that's how, what we work with. So if we want to know after three seconds where it is, where was it to start off with? At zero seconds, it's at five. So I'm going to write five and then add the integral of the rate. So I'm going to do for the next three seconds from zero to three seconds. Let's integrate the rate of change, which was four T cubed minus six T squared plus one. So what I've written out here represents the position of the particle after three seconds, because I'm starting at five, and then for the next three seconds, I integrate how much it's changed. This will give me my net displacement over those three seconds. So I, let's see here, let's take the uh, antiderivative of this, and we're evaluating this thing from zero to three. All right, I've run out of room, so let's move this up here. So now I go five plus, plug in the three, and I'm gonna get three to the fourth power is 81, minus three to the third power is 27 times two, 27 times two, 54, and then plus three, and then subtract, and now I plug a zero in, so I get zero, 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 zero. Plug in a zero minus zero, all right. So then this all simplifies down to, what is this? 81, three, 84, 30, uh, 35. All right, so after three seconds, the position is at 35. You also could have found the original x of t function by taking the integral and then plugging in a zero into time, setting it equal to five, finding the c, and then once you have that function, you could then plug in the point, uh, the time of three seconds. That would also work. But often, this is a faster way of doing that. All right, so now let's do this one after two seconds, if x of one equals negative two. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to do negative two. That's right, negative two. And then we're going to add the displacement. So the displacement is from one second, because we're at one. And then one second later is two seconds. So we're just going from one to two, the displacement of that same velocity function. So as we work through this, we're going to get the same thing that we had here. So I'll just set that up. This time though, we're evaluating it from one to two. I'll come up here, because I know I didn't give you a lot of room. So now we go negative two plus, all right, plug in the two here. Two to the fourth, that is 16. Two to the third is eight times two again, that's minus 16. And then plus the t, so it's plus two. 
and then minus, and now we plug the one in. So we have a one minus two plus one, plugging in that one. All right, so what do we have now? We have negative two plus, oh, I wrote 18, sorry. Yeah, you probably caught that. 16, not 18, sorry. So that's a zero. Uh, so just the plus two minus, and then one minus two plus one, that's all zero, right? So that is gone. And then, oh my goodness, the whole thing is zero. So the position after two seconds is going to be zero. Now, the last type of problem I'm gonna show you is not necessarily the only type that you're gonna have, right? I'm just gonna try and show you an easy example of this, and then you'll have some variations of it in your practice. So what is the total distance traveled by a particle during the first four seconds? If the particle's velocity is this thing. So I've given you the graph to help us a little bit. So what I'm trying to figure out is the total distance. So that's important to understand is the total distance, not the net displacement, not the net change, the total. So that means I'm going to take this positive area here, and then I'm going to do the area under the curve below the x-axis. That's negative. And I just have to think what I'm actually doing is adding those together, their absolute values, adding them together. So here's how we start off. You want to know when is velocity zero. So I'm going to assume on most of the problems you wouldn't have a nice graph like this. Yes, I can see the velocity for this graph. Velocity is going to be zero right there at t equals two. But let's verify it. Zero equals, we take this and figure out when does that happen? Track three from both sides. So that happens when t equals negative three divided by negative 1.5. Yes, that is a positive two. Okay, so now what we do is we set up two separate integrals. So I'm gonna set up an integral from zero to two. Now, why am I choosing two? Because that's when the velocity is zero. And we know that on one side of that, it's positive, and on the other side of it's negative. So zero to two of, what am I doing? Of uh, negative, I'm gonna change this to a fraction. It'll be a little easier to work with. Three halves t plus three dt. And then I'm gonna add the integral from two to four of the same thing. So when I'm done, one of these is negative, and the other one is gonna be positive, and I need to take their absolute value. Now we have the graph and we can see it's gonna be this one. When I'm done, I need to take the absolute value of this and make it positive. Because if I don't, it'll make it negative. But often when you work with these problems, you won't know what the graph looks like. So what you probably are safe doing is just assume that you've gotta take the absolute value of all the pieces. So you find when velocity is zero, and that helps you break up your graph into your different integrals, your boundaries for your integrals. And then you take the absolute values when you're done. So I'm just gonna do this one at a time. Let's take this one first. So let's do the antiderivative of this. This is gonna be negative three halves t squared divided by two. So that's negative three fourths t squared plus three t, right? Yeah, so I'm gonna do that one from zero to two. And let's just work with that. So plug in the two first. So I get two squared is four. That cancels with that four. Negative three plus three times two is six. And then minus, the zero gets plugged in and the whole thing is just zero. Okay, so this side of it is gonna be negative three plus six is three. All right, so the absolute value of three is still three. So we didn't have to do anything there. And we knew that because the picture showed us that. But again, you might not know that when you're working through it without the graph. So now we say plus, and now let's do this side. So plus, plus, and now we do the same thing. I have this same antiderivative, but this time I'm evaluating from two to four. So we'll plug the four in first, four squared, 16 divided by four times four, negative 12, negative 12, plus three times four is 12. Oh, that's nice. That's gonna become a zero. And then minus, plug the two in. We already figured out that, right? When we plug the two in here, we got a three. So I'm just gonna go straight to that answer. That's a three. So zero, so that is a negative three. And this is where you would have to remember, oh, but I've gotta take the absolute value of that. So then my answer here, I know you ran out of room down here, so maybe off on the side, but the answer is six. So that is the total distance that the velocity traveled, whatever the units are. In this case, we, I didn't say what the units were, so we just write the number six. And that would make sense because this is half of this rectangle, that's six, so that's a three, that's a negative three, so perfect, you can just add them up that way. So if, when you have the graph, it's super easy. If you don't have the graph, then you've got to work out the algebra behind it to figure it out. Okay, so, I've covered some, some decent examples here. You're gonna see a lot more different types than just this though. So good luck on the practice and rock that mastery check. I'll see you back in our next lesson.